Hello and welcome to Auto Harp at the Altar. I am Bay Allen and it is my pleasure to be with you today bringing you another song uh, for the Auto Harp, a song of the faith. Um, we are getting into the season of Lent right now and so some of the songs that we're going to be doing for the next few weeks are going to be uh, Lent based uh, and by that I mean these are songs that are being in the being sung in the church right now during this time period. Um, but there are also songs that you can do any time of the year. And so uh, some of the people that are involved in the altar, the auto harp at the altar Facebook group requested that, hey, as Easter comes around, can we start getting some more kind of Easter songs? And right now we're in Lent. And so uh, we're going to do some. Today is a wonderful song. It's a it's a classic spiritual. It's called Jesus Walked This Lonesome Valley. And there's been many different versions of it. I'll just tell you how I approach uh, this song and especially gospel songs and more spiritual songs uh, that get a different kind of vibe. They have a different kind of flow to them than just a straight old school hymn. Um, I, I try and hit the melody just straight right out the gate before adding all the sevenths and all the different stuff. And so uh, I do have my, my road map. Head on over to Auto Harp at the Altar on our Facebook group. And you can see that there and that'll help you uh, as, as I teach you this song. I'm playing it in the key of D. And then another thing that's wonderful to do with a lot of hymns is to then switch go up one more one more key uh, so I'm also going to do it in E as well and so uh, if you're a diatonic player you can just play it all in one key whatever key is available to you I'm going to end up you know saying the numbers of the chords we're going to need a one chord we're going to need a five chord we're going to need a four chord that being said if you have sevenths of all of those that would be great uh, because we're going to have some fun and play with this song too. So let me just teach you the song straight, and then we'll get into kind of having fun with it. I'll, I'll go through it straight, and then I'll play around with it a little bit, and then I'll break it down and show you what's going on.
So there it is. Jesus walked this lonesome valley. It's a really straightforward song, actually. Um, and again, it only really uses three chords. You can throw a minor six in if you want. I mean, you can have fun with any of these arrangements. Um, I didn't. I'm just keeping it on the straight. Um, as sometimes spirituals can be. Uh, where gospel music, on the other hand, gets a lot of really cool, like, color chords and, like, half diminish and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, so um, Jesus walked this lonesome valley. Let's go through it. Again, I'm in the key of D. If I'm not in tune, I apologize, but this has been a very busy week. So it's relative to itself, it sounds. It's probably pretty close. Uh, but again, I apologize if that's the case. Uh, you can... Hopefully show me some grace in that. But this has been a really busy week. We had Ash Wednesday service and uh, I was kind of struggling to see what I was going to do today for this video. Um, anyway, so here we go. It, it starts on the one and it goes one, four, and then one, one, four, one. So it's one, one, four, one, for Jesus walked this lonesome valley. And so that part is one four one, one four one, one five one four four, four 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 one, one one four five. So let's do that much of it <clears throat> again. One 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 four one. One five one four 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 one 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 four five. So go ahead and pause and practice that. All right, welcome back. And so hopefully you have the first part, and now the next half of it. It's it's only a two liner really. It uh, comes in with. By himself, that's where we ended. It was on that five chord. So then it's five one one five one one five one four 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 one five four four one. That whole piece. Let me do that again. So we ended on the five before. On the word self. Walk it by himself. Oh, one, one, five, one. One, five, one, four, four. Four, 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 one. Five, four, four, one. Okay, so go ahead and pause and practice that. And you have the whole song as a straight song, but then we're going to spend the rest of this lesson today kind of talking about uh, how to add some flourish to it and make it a little more unique and fun and have fun. Playground, make a playground of it. Uh, so pause this, get that down and come right back. All right, welcome back. So hopefully you have that entire line. That's the whole song. Um, and other than just playing some variations and chord substitutions and stuff like that. And so the... Let's just play it through. I'll just uh, sing it. You can just play along as I sing. Je Jesus walked this lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. Oh, nobody else could walk. He had to walk it by himself. Good. Hope you got it. And so now we get into where I have some arranging tips on my uh, on my chord chart that I put up there on my roadmap. Um, and again, when I'm arranging, a lot of times, whatever I'm playing, I, I like to start with the melody as, as pronounced and as basic as possible. And so that automatically gives the listener um, kind of a background, the canvas of the song, if you will. So whatever other chords you throw in there, once they have that melody in their mind, 
they're going to be along for the ride. They're going to be able to follow your, your chord substitution so much easier than if you were to just put them in at the beginning. So that's just an arranging tip as you end up uh, taking some of these songs back into your own church. Or uh, I don't expect you to play exactly as I play. I expect you to kind of take some of the tips that I'm giving you and the chords, but then make it your own. Your right hand, a lot of the time, is really where your flavor is going to come in. Um, you can focus and try and be someone else and, and imitate their hand perfectly, um, but you'll you'll find it. Like there's some tips, uh, for instance, the song's in four four, so um, so. Well, let's just start with two fingers. You can even do that. Just practice the ground. Where does it sound good? A lot of times it'll sound good if you're hitting that one and then your five there. One, five, five. It's kind of like Travis, Merle Travis picking in a way. You can follow your chord changes with it. You can even go underneath like that's all I'm doing though just let my fingers walk like that Leaving these open, so when you get into it, you can be like, you can just start like that, and then bring your melody in, and if these fingers have to beat this one to it, sometimes this one will take the melody, sometimes you'll run across with your thumb, it just depends on what makes sense. So, Jesus walked, it would be. So I use that for both of those. It just happened that I used that. So. I'm using this one mostly for a lot of those notes. and play it straight. Sorry, I was hitting a lot of sevens in there. doing an accompaniment for voice you can do a lot of that kind of stuff you could just do this for an accompaniment for voice just those two fingers or you can one two three it uh if you're arpeggiated all the way up You know, you can get into those faster ones if you want to. You can just play around if you're, if you're accompanying voice. Jesus walked this lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. Oh, nobody else could walk it for him. He had to walk so you got that one too that's the blues one um the blue the blues rhythm 
uh, can essentially be done by just bouncing that four of whatever chord you're on in there, in between it. So, so right there, if I'm in D, I'm going D, G, D. And I'm hitting kind of a seven, but it, it can work with a straight chord. So then when you're on the four, do the four of your four. So that would be a C, because you're on a G there. And then back, four of your one. And when you go to the five, hit the four of your five, which is your one. But you don't need to pronounce it like that. You just want it as a passing. So. Seven chord, I think, works best uh, if you have it. Then throw that rotation to the when you're on that five, hit that seven of the fit. The five is a seven, and that leads you right back into your one. And when you're doing this, <coughs> don't don't strum it all the way across all of those strings. Remember our picking pattern. That's where your thumb is. Right? And so that is where you want to strum. Don't go. You could, but you want it just as a passing rhythmic thing. So. these different things you can do. Um, and in arranging, I mean, this song, a lot of hymns, sometimes you get a lot of verses. This one only has three, but a quick arrangement trick is to just move up an entire key. And so when you're, when you're learning an entire step, so when you're learning this based off of chords, you'd be like, okay, I'm going D, and then I'm going G, then I'm doing D, and then I'm doing A. But then if you transpose it, now we're in the key of E, you're gonna have to think, uh, uh, E, A, E, B. It may not come naturally to you, uh, but the way an auto harp's generally built is the fingerings kind of remain the same a lot of the times, so at least mine is set up that way. Um, if you wanna talk set up, you can message me and we can chat. I play Prism though, uh, but even on my chromatic, I use like a modified Americana uh, and the fingerings are basically basically set up the same. I think the Bowers is, is pretty much set up on a circle fifth pattern too. Um, but anyways, so instead of having to transpose, you could just, in performance mode, you could just change it wherever you want. Like, I, I like going just a step up. Right? Give it a measure to reset the... You know, you go. 
find your accents. Find what works for your style, for how you play. Um, we're already at 20 minutes on this video. I'm going to try and uh, tidy it up a bit. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of just what I do when I'm arranging. Again, start off simple. That way, wherever you take them, <laughs> your listener will be along for the ride because they already have that melody in their mind. Um, and if you sing, sing, right? And, and throw these in in between. So if I'm doing a singing, I won't usually do a solo in between every single verse. I'll do two verses, then a solo, and then I'll sing, and then I'll do another solo to end it, or however many verses it is. I'll just get creative with where I break. Uh, and if you have other people jam, I give everyone a circle, right? Give everyone a round. Um, but you don't have to do that after every single verse, you know. So have fun with your arrangements just as much as you do playing the song. Um, you can oftentimes, again, replace a one chord for, for a minor six if you want a different flavor. Uh, there's so many things that you can do. Uh, you can often replace a four chord for a minor two. There's so many things you could do. Just uh, I talked about that in some of the other videos about arranging um, with the minor replacements, chord uh, substitutions on a very basic level. Just your relative minor of that chord should work. <laughs> um, but yeah, have fun. Oh, hammer-ons I was talking about. For those of you who don't hammer on, <clears throat> you don't need a prism for that. Prism always uses two keys at a time. Um, but you have tandems on your regular standard chromatic. And if you're diatonic, you probably have some there too. You would just have to play. That's part of the playground. Learn your instrument. Like, not just what's written and what you're supposed to do. Learn what no one has shown you, you know, and no one really talks about. Just make noises. Push two at a time and see what it sounds like. That one didn't sound too good. That one sounds pretty good. Right? That one that didn't sound good sounds pretty good in context. Look, I have the same chord there that I have there. There's that, right? So these are like my diminished, half diminished technically, uh, minor seven flat fives, but I use them in a diminished context in songs and you can't really tell much of a difference in the passing tones. So have fun. like discover your instrument rediscover your instrument if you think you know everything about it try stuff you haven't tried yet there might be more um like padding is something there's a lot of fun stuff you can do there's harmonics on there i can't do it right now uh i'm not used to doing it on this harp and i have brand new picks these are my new picks so try new picks they'll give you different these are acri picks and so and I went back to an old school Dunlop metal thumb. Um, but just, I'm always experimenting, <laughs> just trying to find something new um, that I can do. So it, it, it freshens your playing. If you felt like your playing's been getting stale, like find something new. Um, sometimes I'll take my hammer dulcimer uh, mallets and just hit on here. And it's fun. Enjoy. It's music. It's, it's, it's art. It's not just math. And... Uh, you know, you can look at it from a mathematical standpoint, uh, but if that's you, I encourage you look for the artistic standpoint. Uh, see that it's fun, and it doesn't just have to be tedious, like learning. Every every time you're practicing, I, I do, I recommend uh, the three R's, you know, there's uh, like, there's rudiments, like technical stuff, like learning scales and uh, working on arpeggios and different technique, you know, you got your rudiments and then you have your repertoire, whatever songs you're working on, like for this week, Jesus Walked, This Lonesome Valley, this is our repertoire. Um, we're adding it to our repertoire, at least. And and then you should have recess. You should have play, a, a time for you to have fun. And so work on these things. Uh, we're coming up on 25 minutes, so I'm going to end this today. Uh, join us on, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button right here on YouTube so you never miss a video. Uh, but also head over to Facebook and join us on Auto Harp at the Altar over there. We have a group where we chat about the stuff and I'll share my roadmaps. You can just print it out and use it as you learn. Um, but if you have any questions, that's a great forum to kind of pose those to say, well, what about this? What about that? And uh, some people will chime in and it's a good, good community. I hope you'll join us. Uh, until next week, uh, be blessed to be a blessing. Um, I pray that you have a, 
a meaningful time during Lent. Lent has begun. And so uh, God bless you and keep you. And I hope to see you real soon. Take care.